So, Pong and uh, Pico8. Before we start, quick disclaimer. Um, I didn't call this a tutorial because um, I'm fairly new to coding, so um, I don't really want to call this a tutorial. If you're a beginner, much like me, I guess you can follow along and maybe learn something. If you're more experienced, then feel free to leave me a comment. Tell me if I made any mistakes or if uh, there's anything that I can do better. Uh, let's get to it. Let's um, call this, uh, I don't know, Pong 2.0. And let's make all the functions in it. Uh, I'll just copy this there. Cool. And this is draw. And this is update. Cool. Um, let's start by making the player. Uh, so let's make a table for the player. And uh, I guess we can have here the player X. Let's say, I don't know, two. Player Y. Um, I want this to be the middle of the screen, so 64. Player width, um, uh, two, I don't know. Uh, and player height, um, and we'll say maybe 16. I think that's all we need. So let's draw that. Let's start by clearing the screen and use the rectangle fill function to make the player. So if we give the player X and the player Y as the first coordinates and then the player X plus the player width and the player Y plus the player height um, and let's make it white so cool we got a player um, let's now make a function so we can move it so we can put a um, function here within the update um, move player and let's create that function. We can make a new tab. I like keeping my code um, in different tabs. So um, I'm going to add a comment here, player and picoid will actually um, show you uh, the name of that tab. It's pretty handy. So let's make that function. Uh, we just add it to the update. So move player. Um, and we'll say that if uh, the player presses the up button, then um, the player Y, because we want it to move up and down, um, will increase by, say, 1. And if the player presses the down button, then we will change the player y um, by one, but in the opposite direction. Um, and we sh yeah, we can move it now, but um, that's upside down. So I got the control wrong, controls wrong. So let's just swap that. And cool, there we go. Now when I press up, um, I can move the paddle up, down, moves the paddle down. It's moving a little bit slow, so I'll change this to two. Um, yeah, that's a bit better. Feels a, le a little bit better. Cool. So we got a player. Let's make another, another table for the ball. Um, and then we'll have ball X, 64, um, so it starts from 
the middle of the screen, ball Y64 too. And let's have another variable for its size. And let's say two. So let's go down here now and draw the ball. So we can do um, circle fill this time and give it the ball X and the ball Y and the ball size. So now we should have perfect a ball and a moving player. Um, let's add some movement to that ball. So let's go into the update. I always like to add my functions here of the update first and then create the function because I usually forget um, to put them in here otherwise. So move ball and I'll create another tab for the ball and name it so and create a function move ball and oops I forgot to add here uh, we'll need two more variables ball dx and let's set that to one and ball um, dy and this will be the speed of the ball and the direction um, so now we can go into the function and set the ball x to increase um, plus the ball uh, dx and do the same with y um, increase the ball dy and now if we test that we can see that the ball is just kind of slowly moves um, away from the screen. We can make that go a little bit faster um, by changing the dx and dy. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Um, currently it's just shooting off the screen. So let's give it some boundaries. So let's make another function ball bounds. Let's call it that and go into the ball tab again and say ball bounce um, so what I want here is if the ball if the if ball y um, is more than 128 so uh, peak white screen is um, max 128 um, so I want to say that if it's more than 128 if it if it's off the screen to the bottom then let's add the if um, then I want to shoot back so then let's say that uh, the dy equals to negative um, dy so that will just reverse the direction of the ball. Let's comment out the X. So we have just a ball that moves up and down and it should bounce back from the uh, bottom of the screen. Cool, perfect. Uh, now it just goes off because we haven't set the other end. So let's do that. So let's say that the ball Y, if it's less than zero, so if it's, um, top of the screen up then we'll do the same thing uh, we'll change the direction of dy and it should yeah perfect so now we have a ball that's just bouncing up and down um, cool Let's change this back and let's add um, a player to or an opponent. Um, I'm not gonna um, add a, another player to, so I'll just call it an opponent because it's just gonna be the computer. Um, 
So opponent, let's make another table for it. Opponent, and this will be the same as the player pretty much. So opponent x, uh, but we want it to be on the other side of the screen. So this will be 126 to set it on the opposite side. Um, opponent y, and this will be the same, 64, middle of the screen. And opponent width will be, oops, width will be the same. And opponent h will be the same. And if we just go to the draw function, let's draw that. So let's do another uh, rectangle fill. This time opponent x, opponent y, and then for the other two coordinates would be opponent x plus its width, same as the player, and opponent y plus its um, height. And let's set that to seven. Cool. Um, I can see that it's um, the opponent is a little bit thinner, so I'm guessing that it's just cutting off the screen. So let's change its um, x to, I don't know, 4, maybe 124. Yeah, I think it's better. Um, cool. I'm guessing that if, if it's 124, if we should move it to 22, um, and we need to change, let, let's just, let's check it. If I change the color of the background, I'll be able to see. Yeah, now they are even. Are they even? I don't think they are even. Uh, so let's change it back to 124. 123. Okay, now it looks like they're even. Sweet. Um, Let's change this back to black. Cool, so now we have moving player, uh, an opponent that doesn't do anything, and a ball that just shoots off the screen. Um, let's make the opponent do something. So I'll create another tab here, um, call it opponent. Opponent, and let's add the function to the update first. So um, we'll say opponent bounce. Uh, you can call this whatever you want. Um, so function OPP bounce. Um, actually, I should probably call this um, follow because it's not going to be about bounce, uh, at least not yet. Follow. So we'll just, so I want the opponent to um, always follow the ball. So that will be, um, it's the ball's y value equals um, the opponent's, rather the other way around, um, opponent's, opponent y value equals the ball y value. So now, um, yep, perfect. So now um, the palette will move um, to always, always keep track with the ball y value. Um, obviously right now they meet and nothing happens. So let's add another function to fix that. Um, and we'll call this one um, opponent bounce. Cool, so let's make that one. Uh, function opponent bounce. And we'll say that if the ball y is more or equal, um, the opponent y and 
the ball y is less than or equal uh, the opponent y plus um, its height opened opponent there we go um, and the ball x equals the opponent's x plus its um, width then um, let's end it first then we want the ball uh, dx to reverse so dx let's check it out nothing um, um, let's try changing this and try it again and nothing 